Hello and welcome to a look at a Ninja Remix for the Commodore 64, a game that was released by System 3. Now, confusion aside, a Ninja Remix on the Amiga is actually the Amiga version of Last Ninja 1, whereas Remix on the Commodore 64 is a remix of Last Ninja 2. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. For the purpose of this video, I have uh, left in 45 seconds of the original music before switching to the remix music so you can tell the difference between the two. As you can unlikely see from the interface, if you are familiar with the original game, there is uh, some aesthetic differences and not all of them successful. I find the ninja face in the bottom right corner to be rather wonky and not particularly fitting. The spiffed off uh, panel from the side where you can see which weapon or item you are currently holding is uh, gimmicky at best. But I should probably consider the fact that there may be some uh, watching this video who have no clue about plot. So let us uh, quickly dash over the plot and uh, for those of you who already know it, I'm sorry for the repeat. In the original Last Ninja, the evil shogun Kunitoki decided that he didn't like ninjas and did his utmost to wipe them all out. Surprise, a single one survived, the last ninja, an individual called Amakuni. He eventually confronted and defeated Kunitoki in Last Ninja, but of course that would be too easy. Kunitoki manages to get his spirit spirited orbits in time to 1988 New York and of course starts causing trouble again, so Amakuni, by the ninja spirits, things, whatever, is teleported after him in pursuit to put him down once and for all. Considering the fact that Last Ninja 3 exists, you can possibly imagine that he did not succeed. That's the plot of this game. The differences between the original uh, Last Ninja 2 and the Remix version is basically only a touched up interface and new music. From a gameplay perspective, something that I noticed very, very quickly is that the enemies are a ton more aggressive than they were in the original game, especially unarmed um, enemies which will throw shurikens at you if you try to run away from them and in this version they are tossing out shurikens like it was candy. It's actually quite funky to hide behind a lamppost or similar solid object and see an unarmed opponent just throw shuriken after shuriken after shuriken after shuriken into the lamppost. It's not in this video because it was silly but it was somewhat amusing. Another difference is that you had to start with one less life in Last Ninja. The original uh, Last Ninja 2, I should say, you have five lives, so, but in this one you actually only start with four. That added to the uh, extensive aggressiveness of enemies gives the game a lot more arcadey feel than the original, and I am not necessarily a huge fan of that point. Beyond that, the remix is the original game. And why System 3 decided to make this game is something that puzzles me a bit, because there was nothing wrong with the original. Bear in mind, the remix was released in 1990, two years after the original was released on tape and disc. This one was released on cartridge as well, and that made me think, because that was around that time that Commodore released the Commodore 64 GS, which was a game system. It only had a cartridge uh, input for uh, software. 
uh, loot thing kind of stuff. And I sort of wonder whether this game was specifically was made to cater for any owners of uh, Commodore GS. The reason for the GS to be created in the first place is I couldn't confirm, but I would guess that Commodore tried to be hip by having a cartridge-based system, but also perhaps to help alleviate the software developers' complaints about piracy, which of course was why, right. I mean, let's not beat about it, it was, but it's not necessarily a subject I want to go into too many details about, because there are always two sides of the same coin. But the thing is, of course, that the cartridge games that was made for the Commodore 64 GS were perfectly usable in a standard Commodore 64, so any attempts at uh, alleviating piracy that way was uh, uh, a failure. So if that was the purpose, the GS wasn't um, very successful. It wasn't very successful by and large because people will quickly realize that you didn't get anything that Commodore 64 didn't have. You actually got a lot less and you only paid a small amount less than you would for a full-blown Commodore 64, so why on earth would you bother with it? I bought one, I liked it, but I never bought any other cartridges than the one that came with the system, so I, I can see the point. Back to Last Ninja 2 Remix. The music that was uh, done for this version by Ryan Uberhand is a mix back. The title music, if uh, anyone noticed, is actually whole class lifted from the dungeon level of Last Ninja, which is hmm, a bit bizarre. But the different mixes that Ryan has done with this game, this level specifically, it's uh, international karate title music or game music that's been remixed and put into this for some, yeah. But, this variation is taken from all over the place and um, precious a few of them I think are fitting for the game. This could very easily be marked by the fact that I'm so used to the original music that uh, the remix music feels intrusive and misplaced. But the sewers, for instance, Matt Gray's absolutely epic. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ambience tune gave you a feeling of being in a dang, horrible, not very pleasant place, and then you have this uh, kind of funky international karate music mix, which it just feels completely out of place. Now, don't get me wrong, the music from Ryan Uberhand is not bad, but, and this is down to personal preference, because different people have different opinions, and that's only a good thing. But certain people have claimed that they believe this remix music to be infinitely better than the original. And of course, we are all entitled to our own opinion. And while I respect that opinion, I cannot say that I support it. For me personally, there's an awful lot of good music on the Commodore 64, and saying that something is better than something else is marginal at best, and of course it is again down to personal preferences. But all things aside, all things said, I think that Matt Gary bass tunes for Last Ninja 2 as a whole is possibly my most favorite from North 64 music ever made. And that's a tall order because there was some epic music made by other people who were Robert, Martin Galway, and Daglish. All those uh, very well known names would uh, rank very high for most Kono 64 music enthusiasts. And they rank very, very high for me. But if I had to pick one combined piece of music, I would likely say the original Last Ninja 2 is my favorite music for the Kono 64.
I don't know in regards to the oh, previous chat again, sorry. I don't know whether it was an active decision for System 3 to get some new music for it to make it distinctively different from the original. Maybe they had some issues reusing the music, maybe they didn't want to, I don't know. But in all honesty, based on what I just said about my preference with the music of the original game, I found it extremely optimistic of System 3 to expect to find a composer that could do something as good or unlikely as it may be better than the original music. And I could easily imagine that people who had played the original would have been playing Remix, buying it, acquiring it, whatever the case may be. Because of curiosity, to see what the differences the Remix actually entailed. And in all honesty, I don't think this justifies existing. I know it sounds a bit horrible, I suppose, but and a bit harsh, but, but seriously, if you do not absolutely love the remix music, then you are better off just playing the original game. There is very small gameplay changes, as I mentioned earlier, but outside of that, this is a last minute too. The different music and a updated interface, which I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of. I'm not going to toss out nasty words like um, milking and rib off and that kind of stuff, but for my personal preference, I would have preferred just the original game being put on garbage. Last thing to do is, as a base game is a great game of what it is. I mean, some people will find it extremely boring, extremely bland, or some people love it. That's just the way things are. But at the foundation, the game is excellent. And it was excellent, and the music was excellent. It did not need a facelift, which failed, and it did not need new music at all. Don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the music in the remix. I just think that the original music is infinitely better. And you don't have to agree with that, that's perfectly fine. I can quite happily tolerate people disagreeing with me as long as they are constructive about it. We all, as I said, like different things. Ronaldo. When it comes when it comes to remasters, which of course is something that became popular over the recent years, this would not, in any way, shape, or form, be considered anything that remotely resembles a remaster. I have no uh, mentioned what differences there is between the original game and the remakes, and they are so subtle that it it feels like there's too much copy paste going on and that's why I was flirting with words like uh, milking and rip off but the foundation game is good enough to prevent me from using those kind of terms but it feels sort of I mean the system 3 could have done it even cheaper by just whole cloth release last thing the two um, on another media like cartridge so i suppose they should get some credit for some effort being made but in all, in all honesty personally i can't help but feel that whatever effort was made to change things around was uh, a waste of resources but of course again each to their own i'm just going to let the gameplay out so you can hear the remaining music just like in the original, um, 
the second last and last level have the same music. So there's no difference between the second, last and last level at all. And I actually was sort of hoping that I knew the hand might have uh, come up with something new for that, but maybe he was told to keep it similar, I don't know. Regardless, there's not an awful lot left of this video, but I'm going to uh, conclude that VMAX... I, I, I don't know why they actually bothered. You know what they say? If it ain't broken, don't bloody fix it. On that note, thanks for watching, take care, see you next time. Bye bye for now.